in this Cakewalk tutorial, I'm going to show you how to easily use Cakewalk by BandLab to record guitar. I'm Zane, welcome to Simple Green Tech, where I do weekly audio tech tips, tutorials, and reviews to help you conquer the tech and unleash your creativity. Now, Cakewalk by BandLab is an incredible free DAW or digital audio workstation. And if you're a guitar player, the included TH3 guitar amp sim can give you some great tones. So you don't have to install any other plugins. Of course, you could install other guitar amp sims if you really wanted to, but for this video, I'm just going to show you how to use the included TH3 guitar amp sim. Now, first I'm going to show you how to quickly set up your audio interface in Cakewalk so it's optimal for recording. And then I'll show you how to bring in the guitar amp sim and arm a track for recording. And then we'll get into the actual guitar recording. All right, to set up our audio interface in Cakewalk, we want to go up to Edit, Preferences, and then you want to go to Playback and Recording right here. You want to make sure your driver mode is set to ASIO. Now, this is if you have an ASIO compatible audio interface, which most are, but you might have just plugged in your audio interface and went with whatever the standard driver is for it and it might not be an ASIO driver. So you should go over to the manufacturer's website for your audio interface and make sure you have the current driver set up for it. Now, if your audio interface doesn't have an ASIO driver, you may want to get the free ASIO for all program and set that up with your audio interface. And that acts like a virtual driver and you can use your audio interface with it to get a little bit lower latency. And that's why we're going with the ASIO driver as it provides lower latency. And when recording guitar, having just a little bit of high latency kind of sounds like an echo and it can throw your playing right off. So you want to try to get as low of latency as possible. Now, once this is set up, you want to hit apply. And then go up to devices. And you probably won't have as much in your list as I do. So just find whatever audio interface it is that you have and make sure you have a check mark next to it. Now, if there's a check mark next to something else and you want to change it, you have to uncheck it from both the input and the output like this. And now you can see I can select something else from in here. And once you have that set up, click apply again. And now we want to go down to driver settings. And you can see down here we have buffer size and the lower the size, the lower the latency, but your computer and your audio interface may not be able to handle the lower settings. So you might want to play around with this a bit to find the settings that work best for your computer and your audio interface. And there's another button here called ASIO panel. If you click on that, it would bring up the control panel for your particular audio interface and you can See, there's buffer settings in there. So you want to make sure you match those up and get as low as possible. Now, I use this FL Studio one just for recording these videos as it allows me to record these videos pretty good. But normally I would be going with my manufacturer's control panel and the driver for it, and I can get even lower than 256. So try the lowest settings, see if they work. If they don't, just increase it as you go. And you'll be able to tell because it's going to make some funny noises if it's not working. And it might not even play audio back or record audio if it's not working. So you would just go back and change this setting. Once you're ready here, you can click apply again, and then we can close out of here. And now let's open up a project. I'm just going to start a new project. It's going to be empty. And when you have a project open for the first time, it may look like this. You have these sidebars open. And I normally click on these arrows at the side too close these bars down because I don't really like them there. I like to have a nice clean interface. And of course you can open them up again if you do need them later on. Now let's add an audio track. So you click on this plus sign here, make sure this is at audio and then your input. You want to make sure you select the input of your audio interface. Yours might say input one, input two, something like that, but make sure you choose input one or two or three or whatever number, not stereo. You don't want to choose stereo when recording guitar as guitar is a mono source. So mine is input one, then click on create. And we now have our audio track here. So now let's click on this button here. This enables it for recording. And then to hear it, you click on this here. And now if I play my guitar, 
you can hear it play back. If I didn't have that clicked, I'll play my guitar. You can see I have a signal going in there, but you couldn't actually hear the guitar. So this enables it so you can monitor it while you're recording. So now one thing you want to do is make sure your levels are okay. So if you strum and mine look like they're going to the minus 12 mark, which is okay. If yours were too high or too low, you want to adjust the levels on your audio interface using the knob for that channel that you have your guitar plugged into, not in the software. You don't want to go into the console view and use one of these faders here to adjust the levels. That actually just turns down the volume. So if you were still clipping, then you would still be clipping. It would just be a lower volume. Or if it was too low and you increased it, it's still going to sound muddy, but you've just increased the volume of the muddiness. So make sure you adjust your levels on your audio interface and you can aim for around minus 12, minus 18, somewhere around there. That's a decent level. So now we just need to add the guitar amp sim. All right, before we actually get into the TH3 guitar amp sim, I just want to ask if you're enjoying this video so far, can you please give it a thumbs up? It really helps my channel out and I appreciate it so much. Now let's get back into the cakewalk tutorial. All right, to add TH3, the guitar amp sim, we just need to click on this plus sign beside effects here. And then you wanna to go to insert audio effects. And your list is probably going to look different than this as I have a lot of third party plugins installed on my computer. So if yours looks different, don't worry. You just don't have all the same plugins that I have. I have actually linked to a video below showing you how to install third party plugins in Cakewalk, just in case that's something you want to do. But when you're in here, you want to go down to guitar. You should have this at least because that's where TH3 is. So when you go to guitar, you might only see TH3. Click on that. And here's your guitar amp sim. Now it doesn't look like a guitar amp sim yet, but this is it. And to get it to look more like a guitar amp sim, you want to click on one of these banks here, and these are all your presets in these banks. So let's just click on TH3 Cakewalk and we'll open up one of these presets. Let's try Metal Hero 80s Rock, 80s Hard Rock. Let's hear what that sounds like. Sure, we'll go with that one. And another way, of course, you could do this is just by dragging these amps over into this area here, and you can build your rig up that way. But I'm just going to use presets for now. So we are now ready to record. And one thing before we start recording is you might want to make sure this button is yellow here or turned on. And this is your metronome. You might want to play along with a metronome. So I'll leave that on. And then to start the recording, you just press this button here. Right, and there is our guitar recording and you can press the space bar on your keyboard to stop it from recording or you can just press the stop button up here. Now if you wanted to record another guitar track you would just create a new track again same way you did it before. We're going to turn the other track off so we're not recording that track anymore and we'll actually set the input to none on that track. And now we can just copy this down into the effects there. So hold down the control button on your computer keyboard, then click and drag it down into this effects. And now you can see we have it in two places. So we'll arm this one for recording. And let's try the lead. And there's our lead. So maybe that's what we want to do. And you could actually play over top of what you just recorded. So you can have this as your lead guitar. All you would need to do is just hit record again. I 
I couldn't really remember what I played there, but something like that. And the cool thing about recording with a guitar amp sim is if you don't like the tone that you had, you can go back and change that later. We didn't actually record that guitar tone. We recorded the raw guitar and that just plays through this effect. So we could remove this effect. I'll just turn it off. And then you can hear what it sounds like without the effect on it. And that was just the raw guitar. So you can go back and change the tone if you like. If you want to check out some more free guitar amp sim plugins, click up here or click down here to see what YouTube recommends. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more videos from me. Thank you so much for watching for Simple Green Tech. I'm Zane, keep creating, and we'll talk soon.